All right, this is Mr. Curry. Uh, I'm here. We are working on activity 1.1.2, trying to figure out and solve some of these simple machine practice problems. So I'm going to start out, and we're going to work on these one by one. I'll do these as separate videos, so you can go back and watch each one over again uh, as we go through for the lever, the wheel and axle, the screw, and all the different uh, simple machines here with the practice problems and what you need to know to be able to do these and do them well on the test because I do believe that each and every one of you uh, can ace these problems on the test. So the first one here we have is our simple machine which is our lever. Now the problem, the biggest thing that you need to make sure is that you read the problem carefully and identify all the variables that are going into this. So a first class lever in static equilibrium had a 50 pound resistance force and 15 pound effort force. The lever's effort force needed four feet from the fulcrum. First thing that you need to do here is to sketch and annotate the lever system described above. So now we know some things right off the top of uh, the bat uh, based on what we've been told in the word problem. It is a first class lever. Because it is a first class lever, we've got three conditions that could occur. So we could have uh, a lever right here with the fulcrum right in the middle and forces, our effort force and our resistance force equal distance from the two. Notice first class lever directions of forces are the same direction. We also have here distance of the resistance and we got distance of the effort. Alright, five components here on these first class levers. A fulcrum somewhere along the lever. We got a force of an effort and a distance of an effort, which the distance of the effort is the distance from the force applied at 90 degrees to the fulcrum. And then we got our distance. So we're going to, on all of these, we're going to write these variables out. So we should have a force of an effort. We should get a force of the resistance. We should get the distance of the effort. And we should get the distance of the uh, resistance. Now, in each of these cases, we're probably going to be given three out of the four, or we're going to give, be given two out of the four and some other information that we got to figure out what the other ones are. So, so let's go ahead. Let's start out um, with sketching that lever. So I'm going to make my lever, put my fulcrum in here, and I'm going to add my forces. So forces are indicated by a vector angle or vector arrow right there and we got force of E which is my effort force over here and force of F or force of R which is my resistance force right here. And as we read we see it's in static equilibrium. Now that means it is balanced. So in static equilibrium. It has a 50 pound resistance force, so I'm going to label this here, 50 pounds. Yes, this hashtag symbol also is a symbol for pounds. Uh, I use it quite a bit because I'm old school and I'm used to using it that way. It doesn't matter to me, however you want to keep your units, you can also use pounds, LB, uh, but you got to keep your units. We also have the effort force of 15 pounds. So there is the two that we have right there, 15 pounds and 50 pounds. Those are our uh, effort force and our resistance force. And then I'm going to draw, because I need to also maintain my distance, so here is my uh, distance for my effort and my distance of my resistance. 
Now one of these, I know, the effort force is located four feet from my fulcrum. The resistance force, I don't know yet. And that's what we're probably going to be looking at. Now, the next step, what is the actual mechanical advantage of the system? AMA. Now, who remembers the formula? If you remember, actual mechanical advantage equals free. So the force of the resistance divided by the force of the effort. So here, all we now have to do in the center is substitute and solve. So AMA equals force of the resistance is 50 pounds. And the force of the effort is 15 pounds. So there's my substitution and solving. I get my calculator out. So we turn it on. We take 50 divided by 15. And we get uh, an AMA equal to 3.333 repeating. Now I'm going to keep for right now three decimal places out. And there's a reason why I want that. And I'll talk more about that later as we go. Um, other teachers will talk about significant figures and making sure that we are using significant figures correctly. Uh, I'm a traditional machinist um, and an engineer, mechanical engineer. We typically work to three decimal places. So for right now, I'm going to just say let's work and keep to three decimal places so we all get some of the same calculations. All right. Part three of this, it says, using static equilibrium calculations, calculate the length from the fulcrum to the resistance force. So, all right, so how do we do that? So we know the uh, effort force length is four feet, and they want us to calculate out the resistance the distance to the resistance force to see if the same way using static equilibrium. What does static equilibrium mean? Well, basically, we're going to take those two concepts that we've talked about, uh, ideal mechanical advantage and actual mechanical advantage. If we have static equilibrium, that means that they are the same. So uh, our ideal mechanical advantage is the same as the actual mechanical advantage. In reality and in the real world, we know that this is never going to exist. Uh, uh, the ideal mechanical is never going to be the same as the actual, but we're assuming static equilibrium here, so we're going to set them the same so that we can figure out what these should be and how to get the number. Now, with that, we will then take and substitute if you remember, IMA equals IMA DER, so DE over DR, and AMA, of course, was FR over FE. So, all right, so we're going to substitute up here DE over DR equals FR over FE, that's our equation, and we get uh, DE is 4 feet over dr, which is what they want us to know, the distance to the resistance force, equals fr is 50 pounds, uh, fe is 15 pounds. Okay. Now, notice, by the way, going back up to number 2 here, when we have 50 pounds divided by 15 pounds, pounds are a unit, cancels out, actual mechanical advantage has no unit on it so these canceled out up here so don't forget that we got the same thing going on here except we're going to cross multiply so we get uh, if we cross multiply we end up with four feet times fifteen pounds equals fifty pounds dr All right. I want to get dr by itself, so the algebra here, I have to divide both sides by 50 pounds. We get 4 feet 
times 15 pounds over 50 pounds. Again, pounds are going to cross out. We're going to be left with feet. Now, real quick, I can do uh, 4 times 15 in my head. That's 60 divided by 50. So my distance here, and my calculator in, 60 divided by 50 equals 1.2, and don't forget, feet. 1.2 feet. Don't forget your unit. So, my final answer here for my distance to the resistance is 1.2 feet. Just a recap, going back up here, my FE was equal to uh, 15 pounds. My FR was equal to 50 pounds. My DE was equal to 4 feet, and my DR was equal to 1.2 feet. Okay, now, now let's stop and think a moment. What is this telling us in terms of the picture that we drew up here? We need to kind of equate and go back, what would this be like then in the real world? Well, in reality, and we want to try to draw these uh, using some scale and proportion. Let me redraw this. And really, our lever is almost four times from the fulcrum on the one side as the other. So I'm going to redraw my fulcrum here. And I got about four times the distance over here that I have on here. So. Let me redraw this kind of using scale and proportion just to get a better, clearer representation. So here our resistance force is 50 pounds and our resistance distance is 1.2 feet. Our effort distance here is 4 feet, and our effort is 15 pounds. Again, in reality, that would we would indicate that with a much bigger uh, vector force arrow. That since we're 50 to 15, this would be almost five times, not quite five times as long as that, as a truer representation. And that makes sense. You know, when we talk about levers, uh, we know that if we're in exactly in the middle, it's going to take us the exact same effort force as it does resistance force. The farther away from the resistance force, the more effort it's going to take us. The closer we get to the uh, resistance force, the less effort it will take us to lift that particular object. So that is uh, the first problems, one through three, on our first class lever. So uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, of course, uh, talk to me and shoot me an email. Make sure that you understand how to work these type of problems.